is August 21st, 2018. This is Agent Kevin Kobach from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation placing a phone call to Nicole Kessinger, also known as Nikki, at 720-656-9605. The current time is 6.45 p.m. Hi, Nikki. It's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Just say your legal name for me, and then we'll get started. Okay. Okay. It's Nicole Lee Kessinger. And your birthday, Nicole? July 3rd, 1988. And you go by Nikki, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. And then on the weekend of July 28th through the 29th, um, we went to the sand dunes. We went to the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Down in uh, Alamosa? Yes. July 28th, 29th. Did you guys stay anywhere? 20th. What did you say? I'm sorry. Where, did, where did you say? Oh, we camped. Okay. We camped. I don't remember the name of the campsite. Let me ask you this. There was um, some attachments that... Uh, when I was looking at some of your phone stuff today, although very limited, there's a, a man with a backpack. Um, he's got a beard. He, he does not look like Chris to me in, in your photos. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, is he like a little heavier set? Yeah, I'd say he's a little bit bigger. Yes, that is my friend Jim. That is the one that I was with on the... Monday and Tuesday last week. There is some photographs. You mentioned the museum, the car museum. I think I remember seeing a couple photos of of cars, and it didn't strike me as anything then. Um, So there may be a little bit more on your phone than what I think. Uh, But there is definitely no photos of Chris, and I don't remember seeing um, any pictures of the sand dunes. Saturday, we got there. We set up camp. And then after we set up camp, we went to the National Park. It was super windy. Oh, my God, the sand hurt so bad. I was in that. It was, it started raining. Um, and we stayed. We stayed even though the weather was bad because there was, like, nobody up there. Um, and so we did that for most of the afternoon. And then um, we came back to the campsite. And I showed him how to light a fire because he'd never done it before. Um, he'd never lit a fire. He lit a, no, he's never been camping before. He told me he'd never been camping before. And I was huh. like, well, if you want to go, I'm trying to go to San Diego. So that's why we went because he said he'd never done it. On that road that you take to get to the dunes. And it's like, it's almost like a little gas station. And we stopped there and we rented a sandboard um, to go sandboarding on. And... Um, we got, I think we got more ice for the cooler, I think, and we got firewood. For so it's like a gas station? Kind of, but it's like the one-stop shop that everybody goes to because there's, like, nothing else around there. Right. It's right before you get to yeah. the entrance to the, the park. Yep, 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 okay. on the right-hand side when you're driving in. Um, I'm glad that you know what I'm talking about. Well, I worked, uh, um, I worked in southern Colorado for the last five years, and I spent a lot of time around... Alamosa and in the San Luis Valley, oh, so I know gotcha. I know a lot of about that area. Unfortunately, so you you got ice so, um, and uh, firewood. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if we got ice. I think we did just because I like to re up on ice who, every who time. Who paid I go for camping. it? He did. Okay. Did you think he used what? the debit or the um, gift card again? Probably, because that was the plan in the first place. He was just like, "Well, hey, I've got these gift cards." If you want to use them, you don't even have to spend any money, and we can just use these. And I was like, well, that's great. So I remember for the trip, I filled up my gas tank, and I paid for gas, and I bought a little bit of groceries uh, for the cooler. And then um, he took care of, like, the campsite and the board and the firewood and all of that. I got in line for the board. I remember that. But their, their, like, little board rental shop is, like, outside of the building. Okay. But he went inside because he went and got firewood. I'm just looking at your dates so you know you're right. The Bandamere Speedway, the Mile High Nationals, was July 21st. 
Yeah, so, that's what I was going to say. Yep. Get online and see if that matches. Yep. And then we went back to the campsite, and we lit a fire, and we ate. And we just hung out by the fire for a few hours and just visited. And then it started raining really hard. So we put everything in the tent and put out the fire, and we went in the tent. And I remember he was, like, wide awake, and I was so tired, like, Oh my God, I wanted to sleep so bad and he just like would not sleep and it was kind of bugging me. Like I would, I think I would, I would like almost like wake up and like half subconsciously like have a conversation with him for a sec and then like doze back off. And I just remember being so tired and he was up probably for a while. Okay. And, and then, so you guys come back to the Denver metro area on Sunday? Kind of. Yeah, but we, so we went, um, one of my friends wanted us to go to the Renaissance Festival, and she didn't know who I was with, but she was with, like, at the Renaissance Festival in Colorado Springs, and she was like, oh, you should stop by, and I made up an excuse to not go over there. I just told her, I was like, yeah, I don't really know, you know, and I, like, kind of got out of it because I didn't want her to meet him. I got it. What friend um, was that? Charlotte. Okay. Uh, on the way back up, we stopped in Colorado Springs to eat, and we stopped at a restaurant called BJ's. On Nevada and I-25? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, there's like a Costco. Oh, wait. I think I remember the Costco. I think I remember the Costco, because don't you kind of have to, like, you, like from the highway, you can, like, see, or yep. not the highway, but that main road, you can, like, see the Costco, and then you have to kind of, like, turn in and around into yep. that shopping center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So, picture walking in, um, and the front doors are behind you. We were sat to the right on the like first level like there's there's like a few different levels so we were sat on the right side and then in the right side we were on the like left portion of the section on the right side like there's this little like single seater booth they're okay. really small okay so almost like in the center of the restaurant almost but just like kind of on the right section of the the main floor okay Okay, so did you pay? Like did he again pay with a gift card at that time? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. And then we went home. Okay. Did you see him the following weekend? Uh, no, because he was out of town. Okay. Do you know where he went? He, yeah, he went to North Carolina. Do you remember the dates? Uh, no, I think, I think, uh, I want to say that he left on the 31st of July. I'm almost positive, because we hung out the weekend prior at the Sand Dunes, and then he went to work on Monday, the 30th, I remember that. And then, I think he left on Tuesday, the 31st of July, I think, and I don't remember when he got home. <clears throat> okay. Next time you guys go out? Uh, it was that Saturday. Saturday. Uh, the 11th. And you guys. And that was. The lazy Yeah, night. the story. Yeah. Okay. So we got that all down. What's next on your list? Um. Sorry, I was not, I forgot about all that stuff. And I didn't <laughs> That's all right. So we ran through something. I'm, you know, the first time we talked, you were really tired. The second time you were overly stressed and you had thought of some very important stuff that you wanted to talk about. So it's fine. And it, I don't mind talking to you as many times as I have to talk to you to get everything down. You know, my job is to talk to you and make sure that this stuff is, um, you know, placed in, in a, a report. So it, it's there forever. So it's, it's fine. Again, I, I just keep telling you every time you, you, when you remember things, just call me and, and we'll get it down. All right. 
Okay, okay, yeah, and I hope you guys pull cameras and all that, because, like, I'm trying to help you. I'm, like, I'm really, honestly disappointed that you guys don't have all my text messages or don't think that you do. Like, it makes me sad. Like, I really, I want you guys to have them. Like, you need them, and it's, it's frustrating to me, but it's like, I'll just tell you everything I know, and we'll go from there. That's um, right. hold on. Uh... Hold on, what else? Oh, okay. So now, so Monday. I think probably the most important conversation that I've had, I had with him after all of that took place was that first phone conversation on Monday night. Like, the later one. Remember I told you you were telling me there's two big ones? Right. And the first one was the one where he mentioned the sheets, the smelly sheets with his kids, and that was also the one where he was telling me he was going to go get his wife's wedding ring appraised. Um, That same conversation, he... I don't remember exactly how he phrased this. Like, I don't remember, like, what led to this, but he told me... Um, something about, like, he mentioned that he had told, I don't know what he said. He said something about the separation and how, like, she was okay with with the fact that he wanted a separation or that, um, something like that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, wait a minute, um, what? Oh God, I don't, I'm like drawing a blank. It, here's the deal is like, he had been telling me the whole time that I was like spending time with him, that he was getting separated, getting separated. And he kept saying that he was the one who initially initiated the separation and then that it was more of a mutual thing. Like he said that he was the one who had initially brought it up okay. uh, like before we had met and then like she was on board with it where she was just like, I'm not happy either. Let's do this. Um, and then I um, I remember telling you guys that when he was going to go to North Carolina, I kind of like backed away from the situation and I was like, hey, I think you should try to fix things with her because you have a really beautiful life with her and I think you should try to fix stuff. And he kept telling me like, you know, I don't want to, I don't think she wants to. And I was just like, please try, like just please try. Like I just thought he had such a beautiful life and, and you know, and I was willing to just leave, like leave his life. I was like, if you work things out with your life, I'm gone. And like, I, and, and that's fine, you know? And, and he'd always be like, well, what about us? And I'd be like, don't worry about us. Like, try to fix stuff with her. And he said, okay, I will. And then when he went to North Carolina, he told me that he sat down and had a conversation with her and that he told her that he wanted to fix it. That is what he said to me. He told her that he wanted to fix it and she said no, that she still wanted the separation and that she was ready to file for divorce. So I was under the impression when he got home from North Carolina that the divorce was filed. That was what I was under the impression. And so then on Monday, when we were on that one phone call where he was just saying all sorts of weird stuff, he like, again, like, I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was something along the lines of like, um, she was okay with the fact that I wanted the separation. And then I remember asking him, I was like, wait a minute, when you were in North Carolina, you told me that you tried to fix it with her and she was the one who said that she didn't want to fix it. Okay. And he's like, no, I just, and then he goes, no, I just told her that I still wanted, you know, to continue with the separation. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, he lied to me, God, he fucking lied to me. He lied so much. It's, it's, okay. It's, so that just struck you as another lie? Yeah, so that one I don't, well, it, it, yeah, well, and then now I'm seeing the news where he's telling everybody that he separated from her on, that he said he was, he told her he wanted a separation on the Monday that she went missing, and I'm just thinking in my head, like, he told me that he had already had that conversation with her before 
I was in the, even in his life. Well, and so not to cause you any more stress, but so when you're talking to him on Monday, this is Monday, right? This isn't Sunday. This is Monday. No, this is Monday. So this is after the event. This is after the murders. Yes. He, yes. he is telling you that he, she mentioned uh, that it was oh, he, she was okay with the separation, although you know yes. now that um, that wasn't accurate. With those, that was something different than he had previously told you, and certainly she couldn't have been really saying anything. Unfortunately, so I mean he's making he's making up stories after his wife is deceased. Jim, is that a fair yeah, statement? Well, is that I'm I'm kind of trying to follow where you're going. I, I don't honestly. I, it just struck me as odd because I don't know if he was talking about the conversation they had had that day, or okay. if he was talking about North Carolina. But either way, it just struck you it as was weird. Odd. It, it, it it struck me weird because he said that he was the one that was like pushing for it now, and I was just thinking in the back of my head, like he he made it sound like when I first got into his life that he was the one who had brought up the separation, but that she was like super gung ho about it. Like he made it sound like she was all on board with it. And then when they were in North Carolina, he's the one who said that he tried to fix it and she was, didn't want anything to do with it. So it was weird to me when he was saying that he was the one that initiated the separation. Cause I'm like, wait a minute. Like, and I think he, it was weird to me because I think he was referring to to either whatever happened on Monday morning or he was referring to whatever happened in North Carolina. And I was just really confused because I was like, well, at that point, I thought she was the one pushing you away, like not you pushing her. Gotcha. Okay. Honestly, I don't know if that has any significance, but it's just, it was just a lie that I caught him. And I don't, I mean, I think everything he told me was a lie, but it was like a lie on top of, it, it's a lie that contradicted the previous lies. What's next on so, your list? Uh, um, let me see. Okay, so then in that same exact conversation, two more things happened. Okay. One, um, I was asking him about his daughter's EpiPen because I know that CC has that tree nut allergy. Okay. And I was like, I was like, I, again, like, I don't remember, like, word for word, but it was something along the lines of, like, she didn't take your daughter's EpiPen? And he was like, no. And I was like, well, aren't you a little worried? Because I was, like, trying to do my own reconnaissance, and I was like, aren't you worried about that? And he's like, he's like, well, we have, like, a stash of them in the basement or something like that. And he's like, she probably just took one of those. And I just thought it was weird because several weeks earlier, he had told me how expensive EpiPens were. So I'm like, if they're not expensive, how the how do you have a stash? You don't have a stash. Nobody can afford a stash. <laughs> right, they're very expensive. And yeah, so I almost was like... And unfortunately, there it ends. And we don't know what the second thing was that she was going to tell us, which obviously was going to be a load of BS like all the rest, but still might have got something out of it reading between the lines. But we never got to hear it. So there endeth this phone interview.